Okay, so today's MAD tutorial painting lesson, we're going to do an abstract landscape. And I normally would paint on a gallery wrap canvas, but I don't have any. Um, I've ordered them and waiting for them to come in. So today I have a just a canvas panel, uh, 12 by 16, just to kind of get us started in the process. I have a wooden palette, which I'll do a video on transforming these into actual two-sided works of art. We have a um, cloth to wipe off like excess paint or to dry your brushes with. I use either upcycled old t-shirts or kitchen cloths. And then we'll need some sponges, some artist sponges. Um, that I will show you how to use those a little later. Uh, my paintbrush, a Pentel paint pen, I guess you'd call it, and of course some water. Now let's go and see what colors, oh, say hi to Mikey, my little studio assistant. And here's my paint colors, all the pretty colors. So today I'm thinking we'll go with a gray background. So I need some white and I like Liquitex, that's probably my main go-to brand. And then let's get a Payne's Gray, that's my favorite gray, it just, I don't know, the vividness it creates. And then I'm thinking, hmm, because this will be the background. Now for the leaves, I'm thinking maybe like an orange theme. So. Let's go with this richer, it's a Winsor & Newton Gallery. Uh, I don't even say what color it is, but I like it. So that, and then we need a lighter color to go on top of it, a lighter gray. I'm thinking, let's go with a little fluorescent. Why not? So this is our color choices for the day. Let's turn it into a beautiful work of art. Okay, let's get started with the background. And it's going to be a light and gray or just various shades of gray. Um, so let's put some white on there. Some of the Payne's gray we selected. And get to work. And a quick note, um, I like to paint flat. If it's anything 24 by 48 inch size and lower, I usually paint it flat. I do occasionally the 24 by 48s I'll do on an easel, um, but the smaller stuff I almost always paint flat. And it's just a, a preference. Um, you can always get a little tabletop easel if you want. Um, and this one, it like it's kind of convenient because it has different sizes that you can put on there. Let me just prop that on there. Set it on your table and paint if you work better that way. I work better on flat. And most of my tutorials will be shown on flat. Probably maybe do some bigger ones maybe at some point and then we can do it on an easel. But all right, let's get started. So I usually start kind of, it's like a gradient in the colors, depending no matter what the colors are, I'll start from the bottom is usually the lightest and it goes up to the top is darker. And then when I go to do the tree, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I think I want the lighter at the top and I just immediately flip the canvas. But let's get to painting. So just applying some white down here across the bottom. And these are acrylic, so they're going to dry quicker. Um, but being that they're on canvas, sometimes I actually paint on bristle paper and it dries almost the instant it touches the paper. So I didn't want to use, the, use that as the tutorial for those, even though I do a lot of my own personal paintings that I sell on the bristle paper but you have to paint extremely fast. Be prepared to have to go back and blend in because it dries so quickly. Canvas, you don't have to worry about that so much. So down here at the bottom, if we're just swiping on some of the white. Now just the slightest little bit, mix in a little bit there of the Payne's Gray, and you kind of just put it on there. And this is why I like using the flat headed brushes because you get these brush strokes in there. To where it makes it, it gives almost a little bit more depth structure, I'd say. We're just gonna go across the bottom here and get it all 
adding a little bit of that color in there. I don't know, some people might argue gray is not really a color because it's a variation of black, or the black and white, either one of them are colors, but if it creates anything different than just airspace, I guess, <laughs> uh, then I consider it a color. All right, so then let's go up here and add a little bit darker of just the Payne's Gray by itself. And the beautiful thing about Payne's Gray is that it, when you, like if you were to apply it just by itself, it looks almost black because it's so dark. But then depending on the amount of white you add, you can get some of the most beautiful variations of grays. And it's like, it almost has this shimmer to it, this sheen, this vibrancy that I've never gotten from any other gray. So Payne's Gray, P-A-Y-N-E-S, and especially by Liquitex, is my go-to gray. And I can get pretty much any shade of gray out of it, which is the beauty. So we're just putting this together, getting the background. We want to keep it, show that gradient a little better. And sometimes, quite frequently, I jump around on the canvas. Um, so now I've got this and I'm like, hmm, I want to blend it better. So let's go to the top and put, because this will be the, you know, the more dark side of it or top to bottom. So let's put that in and then we can fill it in and merge it together. Let's just get along here. Let's see, make sure my stuff isn't in the way. Get that darker Payne's Gray up on the top. Okay, let's add just a touch of the white. And see, here's where you can really see how the effects are made with the flat brush. See how it does that? And then you just come in here and then you can just like pull off of the sides of it a little bit, just kind of dab at it and to make it blend in better. But you definitely get a very cool brush stroke effect by using a flat headed brush. Rays in there. Let's move to this side. Okay. It's kind of just a lot of like kind of angling the brush um, and doing like a half dab, I guess. And then sometimes you know, you can have the whiter, like a whiter section like this, and then you decide, you know what, I think I want some more a darker there, and just come over top and then throw in those brush strokes, those flat-headed brush strokes in there. Okay, how's it looking? All right. I think we need a little more gray. dab off some of this excess paint onto our cloth here. All right, I want it to be a little darker over here. Fill in all the spots where you can sort of see a little bit of the canvas texture coming through. So you have to, some places you have to put a little extra paint on top of it if you see it coming through. Right up here, we need this to be a little darker so we get that gradation from dark to light. Throw a little white right there. A little a couple dabs. Let's see. Um, right here. Okay. process this is the background you can do this in any kind of colors that you want obviously 
Um, let's put the pen in our water so that it doesn't dry up because acrylics, once they dry on that paintbrush, the paintbrush is done, it's like solid rock. Anyways, back to the painting. So you can do this in any colors you want. And I've got, uh, and we'll eventually do that, um, but more than just a two color gradation where you can do like a whole rainbow. I actually did, I think the last painting I did was one of these and it was like with a rainbow colored background. Um, we're gonna let this dry really quick and then we'll start making the trees. Let's just do a quick little close up of our background as we're waiting for it to dry. See all those pretty brush strokes we added in there with our flat headed brush. And the thing is, it's when you're creating the background, you kind of just do it until you feel it's right. Like you just, I mean, you may have noticed when I was painting it towards the end there, I was like, oh, let's dab a little here, let's dab a little there. And that's just kind of to get the balance where you're like, okay, this is the effect I want. It feels filled in properly. Um, it, this is right. Let's move on to the next stage. So it's almost dry and then we'll be adding in our trees back to our little painting session lesson um the background is dry now and what we're going to do next is create some black silhouette um, trees and i like to use a very liquid black paint for this um just because it goes on a lot easier i tend to use apple barrel or sometimes golden apple barrel just automatically is a more fluid type of paint. It's not like as thick as say the, the Liquitex Basics. Um, but if you wanted like uh, another brand to go with, if you can't find these, you can find these at most you know craft stores or online. I order almost all of my art supplies on dickblick.com. Their prices are great, the quality is great, the selection is huge. Um, but anyways, so this is what we wanna use. It's some nice fluid black. And I'm gonna zoom in, well, let's see. This is a finer point tipped paintbrush because we're going to be doing like just some straight lines basically. And so this is kind of convenient. And if you wanna get the point really nice and sharp to begin with, let's get a little water on it and shape it into that perfect little point. And for this one, because this is a smaller size painting, this is a size zero. Um, they'll have them on the side here. I really never go by the, the sizes. I just look at them in person. I'm like, oh, that works. I've got like a whole selection of different sizes here. And I just have like, oh, for what I want to do, that size looks good. Um, but just to help you guys out, if I can see it, some of my paint brushes have paint over the number, so I can't really help you out. But this one is a size zero. So I'm going to zoom in with the camera. Um, so that we can see better the process of adding in our skinny black line trees. Okay, so let's start drawing in our trees. And you just start anywhere, really. You can start from the bottom and go up. Let's do one of those. And you want to keep it fairly thin. And I wouldn't worry about um, if it's like not perfectly even or sized or filled in. That's the beauty about original art is you want it to look imperfect, really. Um, unless you're going for like photorealism, of course. But we're working with abstracts here. And so up here, we're going to create these are the branches that our leaves are gonna go on. So we gotta wanna have those branch out off of the top there. And then let's do another skinny one and make them varying sizes because obviously trees, their trunks and whatnot are all different sizes. So it's more branches up here. And I kind of space them out, like when I'm first putting them in, just to kind of get a good balance and feel for how many there should be and how distance apart they should be. So here's a little fatter one. We're gonna make him, her, whatever it may be, 
extend up here a little, the branches a little higher towards the sky. There we go. And you can fill it in a little more if you want, if you're seeing a little bit of background paint come through. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and let's do a shorter one down here. So let's make it kind of skinny. And then throw in some branches. There we go. All right. And then let's move over more towards the middle. And we'll throw a pretty decent sized one in here. trees, I mean, they're not perfectly straight lines anyway, so we want them to look unique and different, each one of them. So don't worry about having perfect lines. They can be a little wavy even. It's better like the branches here. There we go. All right, and next to it, let's put another decent sized one. There we go. Throw in some branches. And I just think we need a smaller one here. It's kind of nice when you have them next to each other like that. It just creates, um, I don't know what you'd even call it. It just feels right. It looks aesthetically pleasing. And we'll put one right here. Fill it in some. And right now, you know, it's all black and white, gray, but the fun part is what we're going to get to shortly when we throw in the pops of color. Always the best part. Like I always like to say, you can never have too much color. So one of the reasons I like to do a lot of these with the gray background is it really creates that contrast once you do put the color in and it just sets a really nice kind of a mood like you have this very neutral background and then boom major pop of color on the top and you can also start to see the reason that I do the gradient um, because it creates this more of a depth kind of uh, feeling once you start getting the trees in. Gives it a little bit more of a feel, even though it's an abstract, obviously, an abstract landscape, it gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel of being out in the woods. All right, let's move over to this side. Let's go right here. And if you'll notice, in order to keep it more of a perfectly straight line, I use my pinky as like a guide to roll down. It keeps the um, line more straight up and down, which is another reason why it's good to um, let the background completely dry. Because if you're doing that and it's wet, you're going to be like grooving like edges, lines into the paint with your nail. Okay. Go. Another. Let's get one that's way, way going up to the top. His branches are way up here. There we go. The great thing about these paintings is they may seem, you know, very simplistic um, and they're easy to do, but the finished product is so pretty. Um, and the great thing is it really can go with any decor at all. Obviously, modern contemporary it would fit in because it is an abstract landscape, but it even fits in with traditional. And if you're wanting to, you know, create one to fit in with a specific color theme, obviously you pick your own colors too. 
which we'll be doing more of these in different color schemes. And some of them I'll be adding in my signature moons too. And I'll do a tutorial on just even how to do just the moon itself, which there's numerous ways to do them as far as which with shading and light source, etc. And that adding in a moon to these kind of paintings is adds a whole nother element and dimension to them. It's always fun to add in different things to the art. And like you see here, what I just did is like, sure, this is a nice skinny little tree and I accidentally or don't really care so much, it doesn't matter, but flattened the brush out and I made this little thicker spot here, but that's fine. I don't want it to be perfect. Imperfections are beautiful. Okay, you know, I'm looking over here. I really, we need one on this. There we go, see how that filled that in perfectly. All right. That's that. Okay. Back to this side. Oh, quick note too, in case you're wondering. Um, my painting table here is actually um, Ikea tabletop, so I'll have to do a do-it-yourself tutorial on that as well. But to protect the white, um, I just have some uh, recycled white paper here and I just lay it down and tape it off to the side and it and it's something that it, you know once it's completely covered in paint I can take it off and um, put some new paper on there to protect the tabletop or if you're doing it on a glass tabletop or wood tabletop in your kitchen or what have you it's always a great option and if you're worried about the paint, I mean, this is a pretty decent paint. I've never actually had any of it like bleed through onto the background, but you could always double it up um, or get a thicker type of paper. I also have, just to be kind of like upcycle, repurpose, um, I have some frames that I bought a long time ago and they have an acrylic, um, not a, or is it acrylic? I don't know what it is. Um, instead of glass, it's like a plastic um, piece to go over the artwork, which I don't like because it creates a glare. But I've taken those things there because it's plastic and try to live a sustainable lifestyle. And I'll lay that down over top of this um, to protect it, the tabletop. So there's different things you can do. Get creative about finding ways to reuse stuff in your if your art supplies. Okay. Let's put this in here. We're getting there almost. A couple two more trees maybe and then we'll move on to creating the pretty leaves. I need a skinny one right here. I don't want too much paint on there. That's good right there. And so if I start to get too much paint on there and I want to do a skinny line, say, so I go like this, I'll take the brush and you kind of roll it, which makes the tip even more pointy and then you can just dip that in there and come in here and makes a very nice thin line. Okay. Let's see, you know, definitely something over on the edge here. Put this in nice and good. And I think we need to maybe create some shorter ones down here. We've got a few. Let's do one right here. Let's make this one really low down here. Just helps create a little more balance, depth to the art. There, that one's good. I think we need another one right here. There we go. Let's see, how's that looking? I'm feeling that looks pretty good. All right, so we're done with this. 
Now we're going to move on to this part. Okay, so that was our tree background. Now we need some sponges. Um, you know, I think this size will work good. And let's go ahead and I don't know if we can see it in here. Okay, we can. You have your already have your more fluid black paint right there. Dab it on there, and then just come where the trees are. And this sometimes I do it in black, or sometimes I do it in like if it's a really dark blue or a dark green or red or something. I'll use that instead of the black, and then go over top of it with um, another color or two. This one we're going to do the black because our oranges. One of the oranges, the background orange, isn't like super dark, so we wouldn't get the depth and contrast contrast that we will by using the black here. And you just kind of, you know, twist it, turn it, smudge it, just till it feels right and looks right. There we go. Pretty little leaves. And I get these sponges too. I get the synthetic ones. I don't use the any animal ones. Okay. Although there are some, and I have used them, um, that are eco friendly sustainably sourced. Okay. Now I'm going to let this sit for just a quick minute. I'll dry fast because this is pretty um, thin layer. So let's let this dry and then we'll add in our pots of color. And put this sucker in the water. Don't want those to dry out either otherwise they don't become effective. All right, let's do some pops of color with some orange. We have a little bit of a dark orange and then our fluorescent orange over there. So come over here, get some on this sponge there, and come in and start applying it over top of the black. And just do it kind of along the bottom for now of the black branches we put in. There we go. Ooh already looking good. Instantly you see the trees start to come alive. Okay, whoops. Shadow there. There we go. And you just kind of feel it out so that it looks like the branches where you have some darker spots. So this is kind of like you're looking into the, the forest. And of course you're going to see different shades as things go further away or closer up or depending, you know, where your light source is coming from. So you can dab, once you get a, most of the thicker paint off, you can just very lightly dab other spots just to get a little hint of it kind of in the background part of the trees or where they're getting less shade or light, I mean, excuse me. Okay, I feel like, like here is super bright. Let's make some more brighter sections. Ooh, up there is good. That was a nice little spot. Maybe down here. Maybe across there. Let's come up in here. Right there. And again, you want to make sure that you leave some spots in the background there. Because you want to feel the branches like coming towards you. Not the branches, sorry, the leaves popping out and coming to the foreground of the painting. Okay, right here, I feel like we need some more. Okay, and I mean, really, if you wanted to, it would be great just like this, but I really want to create some real pop. So, I think uh, right here, we need a little more in this little bugger down here. And I'll lay here and there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, if you wanted, this would be perfect just as it is. I mean, shoot, look at that. So pretty. But I want to put a little pop 
of the fluorescent. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I got a little smaller sponge because this is just gonna be more accent and do this along the bottom of them, like down here. There, look at that. Here, that's a little bit too bright. So let's go back to the other color just to like tone it down a bit. It's a little crazy, a little bright, which means I had too much paint on there. So what you do is to get the paint off, you know, you come in here and dab it in there and then get the paint off, just dab it on a drier spot of your, your palette. And then come in and lightly dab along the bottom edge of these so that you leave the other color, makes it look like it's more in the background. We need a little more of that fluorescent over here, okay, down along the bottom edges there. Look at that. Now we're seeing it come to life. Color transforms everything and makes it better. Okay. Ooh, that's so pretty. And I mean, you can't go wrong with fluorescent. Who doesn't love a bright, rich, vibrant color? This makes me happy. Whenever I see beautiful colors, rich, vibrant, they just make everything come alive. Just look at that. Mm -mm -mm. That was good enough to eat. So yummy. Let this come down here. Just using these as like highlights. How are we looking? Pretty darn good. Okay. You don't want to overdo it. Sometimes I just get excited because I want to keep playing with pretty colors. But I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Oof. Yes. Look at those red, those leaves. All right, now this next stage, let's see. This doesn't want to really all the way out here. Hang on. Technical difficulties. Let's just move this up here. Okay. So along with liking a lot of trees in my art, I like birds. So I have this Pentel pen. Oh no. Here. It's over here. Super fine point. Um, it's like a paintbrush tip. Very fine paintbrush tip. And I like to use it for my birds. So let's see if I can zoom in here. Adjust things. All right, there we go. And it's so simple. Just bird. And you do them at different angles, obviously, because you want it to look like they're all just flying free in this beautiful, lush orange forest. Maybe that's what I'll call this. Lush orange forest. And varying sizes, and they don't have to be perfect because they're just little birds off in the distance. Just flying, being free. That's what we want to get the feel of with the birds. A sense of freedom. And you just kind of put them wherever, it, you know, Seems right, where it balances this out, balances out the painting. Okay. Little booger right there. You know what? I think that's it. I think we have our finished painting. Okay, let me just, this wants to fall down. Push that back a little bit. It's blocking some of the light. We have going on here. There it is, our lush orange forest. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along with my painting process. Um, I think I'll do more of these. It's kind of fun just to show the process and kind of makes me think about it a little more too. So I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.